My name is Professor Michael Hoffman. I work at the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in Melbourne, Australia, and I'm a nuclear medicine specialist working closely with our GU multidisciplinary oncology team. Yeah, so the study being presented at ASCO GU this year is the imaging biomarker analysis from the therapy study. Uh, and just a little bit of background, the ANZUP therapy study was the first randomized control trial of lutetium PSMA 617 compared to carbazitaxel uh, in men with metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer. And that study met its primary and secondary endpoints showing better response rates uh, with lutetium PSMA compared to carbazitaxel. And what we're doing in this study is really deep diving on the FDG and PSMA PET scans that were done as part of the screening, as part of the patient registration. So men in both arms had both scans, and now we were looking back to evaluate whether either PET scan could be used for prognostic or predictive biomarkers. And this was embedded in the study protocol, so it was really done prospectively as part of the clinical trial. It's important to note that we did exclude around 30% of men after screening with this PET techniques. And this analysis focuses on the group of men who were randomized to either lutetium PSMA or carbazitaxel. And the hypothesis was that as PSMA expression increases, which we can see on the PSMA PET scan, then we'll be able to deliver more radiation to tumors with lutetium PSMA. So that should be a predictive biomarker for response to lutetium versus carbazitaxel. And the second hypothesis was that the volume of disease on an FDG PET, which shows us the more aggressive metabolically active disease, will be a prognostic biomarker so that patients with high volume of FDG positive disease will do worse in either arm. And in fact, that's exactly what we found. So the odds of responding to lutetium versus carbazitaxel was 12 times higher if you were in the group of men with high PSMA expression compared to two times higher in the group of men with lower PSMA expression. So to put that another way, you know, all the men did better with lutetium versus carbazitaxel on average. But if you're in the group with high PSMA expression, you're 12 times more likely compared to two times more likely in the lower expressing group. So a key number of this trial was that if you were randomized to lutetium PSMA and you had very high PSMA expression, you had 91% likelihood of a 50% reduction in PSMA. So in this way, high PSMA expression being a really reliable and highly effective biomarker for response to lutetium PSMA. The second thing we looked at in this trial was FDG as a prognostic biomarker. And what we saw is that men with high volumes of FDG other disease had a lower likelihood of response in both arms. Again, men were more likely to respond to lutetium in either arm, but if you had a higher volume of disease, you did worse. So that means in a group of men with a, a high tumor burden, uh, the PSA response rate with carbazitaxel was only 20% compared to 57% with lutetium PSMA. And if you were in the better prognostic group with lower volume, it was 44% compared to 70%. Uh, so in summary, we show that PSMA is a predictive biomarker. FDG is a prognostic biomarker. This is one of the first prospective randomized trials to really use quantitative PET parameters as, as biomarkers. And uh, we think this is a really useful technique, uh, which may be beneficial for patient selection and uh, prognostic information. So in this research, we show quite definitively that the intensity of PSMA uptake uh, does predict response to lutetium PSMA. And uh, the randomized trial design was really ideal for looking at this. And uh, we now can be quite certain that in the group of men with very high PSMA expression, the likelihood of responding to PSMA, to lutetium PSMA is very high and much higher than other treatment options. Having said that, you know, men on average did better with lutetium PSMA regardless of the PSMA expression compared to carbazitaxel. So if this treatment was available and funded, 
you would still probably choose lutetium compared to carbazitaxel in most settings. Uh, but in the current environment where perhaps uh, lutetium is not widely available, or maybe in the future, depending on the cost of this therapy, uh, there's a clear message from this study that if you're in that select group of men with very high PSMA expression, you really want to be prioritised for lutetium PSMA therapy. So I'm a strong advocate for the use of FDG PET when selecting patients for lutetium PSMA therapy. You know, the patient selection was not really the subject of this biomarker analysis because it includes the patients that were suitable for the trial rather than the patients that we screened out. But what we saw in the therapy trial was that roughly 70% of men were deemed suitable for lutetium PSMA. So we excluded around 30% based on FDG and PSMA, and that's compared to around 12% in the vision trial. So we excluded more patients, but we think we enriched for the patients that are really likely to benefit. In our experience, patients that have sites of disease that are FDG positive and PSMA negative, we cannot target, but they're also the most aggressive sites of disease that are growing quickly and are most likely to cause problems. Uh, even if you see disease on the FDG PET uh, that's discordant and you choose to go ahead with lutetium, that can still be a reasonable strategy in clinical practice because patients may still benefit. They may derive clinically, you know, reduction in pain in their bony metastases and the PSMA expressing sites of disease. But it's still very useful to know where those other sites of disease are because you can often still inter intervene in a positive way. For example, by giving stereotactic radiotherapy to uh, sites of limited FDG positive PSMA negative disease. So once you can see the true distribution of disease, it allows us to really choose the best treatment for the individual patient in front of us to really personalize care optimally. And sometimes that's a combination of uh, different tumors. And if we don't know, we can't individualize. We're treating a bit blindly. Having said that, in the vision trial, there was close correlation to the contrast in enhanced CT. So these PSMA negative sites were still seen. So for example, in the liver, you can see liver metastases really very well on the contrast enhanced CT. And in the vision trial, if you had PSMA negative hepatic metastases, you know, you were excluded and you don't really need an FDG. FDG will perhaps show that with another degree of clarity, but it's not essential. The main site you miss is within the bones, which is a common site of metastatic disease in prostate cancer, and that's somewhat invisible on the CT scan. So that's really where the FDG becomes critical for optimal evaluation. Yes, I think uh, PSMA expression is really critical uh, because if the target's not expressed, we can't get good outcomes for our patients. And we did see this in the vision trial, you know, 12% of men were, were selected out a little bit higher in the therapy study. And this biomarker analysis shows us the extent of that, that if you have really high PSMA expression, your likelihood of benefiting from treatment is really extraordinarily high. So that group of men with very high PSMA expression receiving lutetium PSMA, 91% PSA 50% response rate. You know, that's really quite extraordinary. And, you know, that's good information to know. Uh, as we extrapolate backwards, there's a group of men with much lower PSMA expression that were treated in the vision trial, and we haven't seen the subgroup analysis of those men. So I do await the further details from the vision trial, and uh, we have another abstract in ASCO GU that perhaps I'll highlight, which we did with our UCLA and UCSF colleagues, where we looked at the intensity of tumour uptake relative to salivary glands, and if you had high PSMA expression greater than salivary glands or less. And also we looked at some uh, middle ground. And again, we saw it was the men with high PSMA expression who really benefited from lutetium PSMA, whereas outcomes were much poorer in the group of men with low PSMA expression. And we have a whole range of treatment options available for men with metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer from uh, you know, carbazitaxel to olaparib to pembrolizumab and now lutetium PSMA and other treatment options. And 
in that complex decision making, which treatment should I give next to the patient in front of me? I think imaging biomarkers, both PSMA PET uh, combined with genetic biomarkers, BRCA mutations for uh, PARP inhibitors, this is going to be really critical to really personalise care best and pick what's the best treatment for the patient in front of me.